I'm Allie. Help perfect your wire working skills along with Potomac Crystals in this video. If you need any supplies, remember to check the description to get to the links there to shop with us online. So we're going to begin this video with our pure leaf crystal stones. So they do not have holes in them. And we have many alternatives to this as well that you could use like these beautiful step rectangles. So this technique will work with a lot of different beads, stones, and so forth. This works really well if you don't want to bezel around something, say with seed beads, because you don't want to lose the shape. That's why I'm using these pure leaves for the example. To begin, we are going to be using 20 gauge wire. And I'm using the Potomac wire in the 20 gauge dead soft. I've started by cutting two pieces, one for each one of my leaves here, in four and a half inches. I'm going to grab my round nose pliers, and I'm going to hold the round nose pliers where I can see the wire kind of hanging out on the top there, but I can't feel it. I'm going to rotate the pliers in my hand to make a half of a loop. Now I removed them from my pliers so you could see what I was doing, but I would usually keep them back in and just rotate the pliers a little bit. Close up that loop by holding the pliers and using your fingers to apply pressure to turn the wire. From here, you can grab your needle nose pliers and you can hold the last point of contact where the wire touched itself and then squeeze down on the handle of the needle nose and bend the wire up. Open a little bit, bend the wire up. Open a little bit, bend the wire up. I'm going to do this until I have three spirals. So I have my three loops there. While I'm doing one, I'm going to do the other one. So you get to see this now in fast motion, holding on my round nose pliers. If you want to, you can take some a Sharpie marker and draw exactly where you're going to hold it. I'm going to make my first loop. I roll over a tiny bit and then keep going with this rotation to get our spiral. Now I want our spirals to be matching. This is going to be the front of the design. Once I have my spirals matching and to size, you're going to measure, you're going to have generally about three inches left of wire. From here, you're going to grab your round nose pliers and we're going to do a double bail. So to do a double bail, I want to come out of that spiral and hold perpendicular to the wire and bend the wire up 45 degrees so it looks like a head pin coming straight out from the bottom. While I'm doing one side, I'm going to do the other side so they look consistent. If you happen to overbend like me, not a big deal, just bend it straight. We're going to then also take our pliers and we're going to hold just above that bend and bend toward the back. So now you see how it's bent right there, basically coming out on top in the middle of that spiral and bent towards the back. From there, that 45 degree angle, we're or sorry, 90 degree angle, we're going to go and create our bale. Now, how big you want the bale to be at the top here is going to be determined by how you're holding it on the round nose pliers. I'm going to hold it on my sparkle tool set here, right about in the middle, go around once. So I'm bringing the wire from the back toward the front of the design. If you need help creating this eye pin, check in the descriptions. We'll put links to that as well. I'm going to take the wire and go around not only once, so see how I'm alternating and changing how I'm holding the pliers so I can continue the wire around it. And I'm going to rotate twice around to create that double bail. Same thing with the other one now. Go in and repeat that. So I open up my pliers, I switch them to my benefit, how I have to, to create that double bail. If you don't like the look of the double bail, don't do the double bail, just do one. Once I make sure these match pretty much, I'm going to hold them back up to my ruler and make sure I have an equal amount of wire on the secondary side. From here, I'm going to come to the end of the wire and we're going to do the exact same thing. Curling it over, making a little loop, and this will be the back of my piece. If your back of your stone that you're wrapping or your cabochon is smaller, you might want to trim this down rather than using the whole thing to spiral. You want to make sure that the spiral is going to fit on the back of the stone and not be in the way. So I've done one, I'm going to do the other one, and then we're going to get ready to fold that over and grab some glue and glue it onto our crystal. 
What we're gonna do now that we have both spirals on, you can see I've already bent this one, you're gonna bend that spiral so it's facing and mirroring one another. So here, after you do your loop, you're just gonna grab with your needle nose pliers. There's my second coil. And I'm gonna turn that second coil so that it's coming down toward the back. Just like that, don't overthink it. Now I wanna make sure that back coil is gonna mirror the size and the style of the stone again. So if you have something that's bigger, you can go bigger. And you can see how my leaf then, my pure leaf is just gonna sit right in there. I'm not gonna to worry too much about gluing the front initially as I am the back. So my spiral to the back is going to be bigger. The spiral to the front is gonna be smaller. If it gets a little bit thrown off, just make sure to bend it towards the middle prior to, check your stones, Prior to gluing, you wanna make sure that your spirals are in the position coming out of the bale that you want. To connect these to my stones, I now have it so that the bigger side is down, smaller side is up, but my stones are facing to the back. I'm gonna use a Loctite, you can use E6000 glue too if you want. Honestly, super new glue will even work. And what I'm gonna do is put the glue on the back of the crystal right in the top middle. While I'm doing one, I'll do the other. This crystal here has a mirror or a cut back, and you can see where some surfaces are flatter than others. Just a little dab, pick this up, I'm gonna turn it around and slide it onto my crystal. As it's gluing, I'm gonna sit it on a surface, like a ruler or a piece of metal off to the side, that I make sure that it's not going to glue to my bead mat. So I'm gonna take this, Flip it over, make sure it looks good from the front, make sure it looks good from the back, and that it's sitting correctly. As it glues and dries in, again, I set the other one off on a little section to dry. Give it about 10 or so minutes to dry, and then we're gonna go in and create the ear wire. So while it's drying, I'm going to actually create the ear wire once that stone is set. So you'll notice I did not glue the front of the crystal on my ones that I was working on. That's because the glue doesn't need to be on the front. If you want to, after it is glued, you can pull it up a tiny bit and drop a little bit of glue. Just beware you don't want too much because you don't want to see the glue on the crystals. Instead, while I'm waiting, I'm going to cut a piece that is two inches and create my own ear wire. If you don't want to create your own ear wire, you can do a coiled or two eye pins here and do that little link in the middle and connect to a regular earring. I have a two inch piece here, and I've already done one already. This is all while it's drying, so I'm not wasting any time. Same deal here, look at my earring, and I'm gonna make a loop that my earring is going to hang from. That loop I'm gonna make sure, just like an eye pin, that if I look at it, the wire's coming straight out from the bottom of that pin. I'm gonna grab a simple Bic pen. Prior to that, put on one of your four millimeter crystals. If you wanna do just that coiled link, you're gonna bend the wire on top. Instead, I'm gonna take my wire, put it right next to that big pen at the top of the crystal there, and bend the wire around the pen. That is a great ear wire. From here, take your needle nose pliers. I go to the end of the loop there, just bend up 45 degree, ever so slightly, take your wire cutter and trim off that extra. The nicer you get that cut, the easier it is to get into your ear and you won't have an issue. Once my crystals are dry, I'm going to take them, once that glue's dry, I'm gonna open up my eye pin that I just created here, put my crystal on, and then close up my eye pin to complete my earring. I still have some drying time on mine, but you can see how easy and simple this look can be with just some simple wire working skills and a little bit of time to create a beautiful pair of earrings. Again, I'm super pumped to go in and I've had these step rectangles here for a while and make another pair. Remember also you don't need to do this in just circles. You can do it in a triangle shape, you can do it in a square shape, or even mirror and do it in a rectangle as well. You can keep the back mirroring also and creating that bail to the top. 
Thanks so much for watching this video, and remember, you can always use this technique with other shapes as well. Remember, if you do need supplies, go ahead and check out the links to Potomac Swire as well as the crystals in the description. If you want to give feedback to other Potomac beaters that are watching, do so in the comments section telling them tricks or tips or techniques that are great for wire working and working with crystals. Remember, if you haven't yet already, make sure to subscribe. I noticed a lot of you don't subscribe, and we want to make sure you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads. Thanks so much for joining me and enjoy the next video.